Hello everyone. Well, it's a while since I showed you a new Dyson vacuum cleaner. So today I'll be unboxing and taking a first look at Dyson's latest cordless machine to be launched in the UK. This is the Dyson V11 outsize, which is very similar to the standard V11, apart from it has a 150% bigger bin and a 25% wider floor head. So without any further ado, let's get this open and see all the parts and accessories we get. Now, I had no idea that Dyson had launched the V11 outsize in the UK until it was mentioned on a recent live stream I held on my channel. So I went and checked Dyson's UK website and yes, lo and behold, I found this machine. And at the moment, it's exclusive to Dyson's website in the UK. So let's see what we have in the box. Of course, we have an instruction manual lots of text there and uh, very little in the way of illustrations which is unusual first thing i can grab out of the box are two of the small tools <laughs> they don't make it easy to get into these things Right, here's the combination nozzle. So it's an upholstery nozzle and also a dusting tool. And we also have a crevice nozzle. Next out is a mattress tool. So obviously this is for cleaning your mattresses, but it can be used for other upholstered furniture as well. Is a little clip that allows you to store the two small small tools these two they can be stored on the wand of the machine so they're always at hand when you need them this is the wand which I believe is in a, a satin red color for this particular version nice and smart there's actually no writing on this one neither you'd normally expect to see Dyson V11 at least a sticker but no it's just a, a plain wand this is the fluffy head so this is designed for carpets and hard floors this machine but this is really dedicated for your hard floors specifically designed with this soft roller there's a suction channel you've also got a roller at the back that's non-powered and you've got velour strips all the way round and a little bit of dust it's always very dusty in the Dyson factory I found unboxing Dyson's they always seem to have a thin layer of dust on them so that's the fluffy head for hard floor cleaning More small small tools you get with this machine. This is a stubborn dirt brush, so very stiff brushes. That's ideal if you're cleaning, say, your car mats, anything like dried on mud, wait for it to dry, and then you can use the stubborn dirt brush to loosen the dirt and then suction it up using the powerful suction of the Dyson V11. This is the up top tool that allows you to extend the reach. It's ideal for cleaning on the top of cabinets, say in your kitchen, top of wardrobes, say you're getting a step stool out, you can do it from the floor. I'll show you that in action later in this video or in a later demonstration video. Don't confuse this. There is another tool that looks very similar that Dyson have fairly recently launched for some of their machines, which enables you to clean under furniture without stooping or bending, but that has a powered connection. So it means that the um, head on the Dyson still rotates the powered motorized head, but this isn't powered. This is just for your up top cleaning. I'm not sure if that uh, previous tool I mentioned, I think it's called the down under tool possibly. This is the up top. Um, I'm not sure if that's available for this machine. I'll have to check Dyson's website. I couldn't see it when I last looked. Right, what else? Another cleaning tool here. Lots of boxes, but at least it's all cardboard so it can be recycled. 
this is your soft small dusting brush ideal for venetian blinds i've got quite a few venetian blinds in my home and this sort of nozzle or the larger one that dyson produce is ideal nice soft velour inside very soft flared brushes you could use that on your tv screen on your electronics as well computer keyboards uh, if you've got old hi-fi system that sort of thing you can use that to remove the dust okay what else have we got in here another cleaning tool this is the stretch hose which i'm glad to see is standard on this model it's quite short though as you can see it does expand that's good for getting into smaller areas so ideal for inside the car getting under the car seats because this cleaner as i'll show you is bigger than the standard v11 and the standard v11 is quite large and it's quite awkward to get under things so with a flexible hose you can actually reach under easier but of course because the dyson has a trigger that you have to hold while using the machine you still have to hold the cleaner while squeezing the trigger and directing the end of the hose with whatever nozzle you want on it so obviously you can put you can put any nozzle you want to on the end of that any non-powered nozzle obviously if you put any powered tool on the end of the hose it won't be powered so there's that so it's a useful addition inside this box we have got the mini motorized tool and that's ideal for cleaning stairs nice stiff brushes good on car mats and good on hard wearing upholstery don't use it on anything with loose covers or anything with tassels because they can be drawn into the nozzle but it is a very effective nozzle it's one of my favorite nozzles for cleaning stairs it gives a good grooming action and of course you can use it in smaller areas of carpets for example if you've got a large piece of furniture and the main nozzle doesn't fit in between the furniture and the wall say you could always put this nozzle on this will fit directly onto the machine or onto the end of the wand okie dokie another box with another little instruction book and the charger now incidentally this will not fit the v11 charging dock as far as i know at the time of making the video dyson were offering that dock free of charge with v11 models apart from this one this also has the later click in battery so you can remove the battery without having to get a screwdriver out okay now here's the one of the main differences between this v11 and the standard v11 that i've shown you earlier this is the new extra wide floor head so dyson are stating that this machine that is quite big Dyson is stating this machine is better suited to larger homes because of the wider floor head with 25% extra cleaning width you can clean a wider area in a shorter time I'll double check I've got my standard v11 with me so I'm just going to do a comparison between the two so you'll see the difference in width I'm also going to see the wattage of the standard v11 head I'm not sure if this will be a higher wattage I'll just have a look at it now so this is hundred watts so in a minute I'll check the wattage of the smaller head but it's very similar in design you can remove the whole brush roll here and you can even clean this under running water if it gets very dirty and again it's got the two types of brushes you've got the stiffer nylon brushes for carpets and you've got the softer carbon fiber brushes which are designed to clean hard floors better but of course you do have the fluffy head but this will cope on hard floors as well so if you don't want to be changing heads all the time you can just clean the hard floor with this head so if your carpet is if your home is more carpet than hard floors then use this head most of the time but if you've got more hard floors than carpet then it's probably best to use the fluffy head as you can see the fluffy head is not as wide as the new wide head okay so there's that I think that's everything apart from the cleaner there's another little leaflet here what you need to know so this is basic 
basic instructions to get you started straight away. And here we have the cleaner itself and yes, that is quite a weighty vacuum cleaner, especially because you're holding the weight quite high up. Uh, but yes, it's huge. I'll do a direct comparison in size with the standard V11 later in the video, but that, yes, that's quite a large machine. Anything else we can find? Well, yes, another box containing the charging mount. So this can be mounted on the wall. It will also hold two of the cleaning tools. But if you don't want to charge this on the wall, if you don't want to screw anything into the wall, you can actually charge the machine with the uh, battery in it, or you can charge it with the battery out of the machine. Here's the port here where you plug in the mains cable, just plugs into this end. But this is a new, new thing for me to have a user removable battery. You can replace the batteries on other Dysons, but often it involves using a screwdriver. But this just pops in and out with a firm click. But as you can see, when you remove the battery, you have access to the charging point. So if you want to keep your Dyson in a cupboard, you can do, but you can still keep it charged up on your worktop. You can just put that on your worktop in your kitchen, plug in the charger, and that's ready for next time. You can also buy spare batteries. So if you've got a very large home and you want two batteries, you can buy a battery and a spare charger, both these items together for £100 on Dyson's website. I think the battery on, on its own is about 85 So I think it's possibly worth getting an extra charger, especially if you do charge it on the wall. If you've screwed the charging dock to the wall, obviously the charger will be in use for that. So if you want to have another battery charging all the time, then just buy the bundle, which is £100 as I said, from Dyson Direct. Okay, well, I think that's everything out of the box. Let's take a closer look at the Dyson V11 outsize and I'll compare it with the standard Dyson V11. It's important that you fully charge the Dyson V11 before your first use, and that will take up to four and a half hours. As you can see, I'm charging the battery outside of the cleaner two blue lights either side of the battery will flash. When the battery is fully charged, these lights will turn a solid blue and then go out. You can also charge, of course, the battery in the machine. And when you charge it in the machine, you get an approximation of how charged the battery is. If you charge the battery when it's fitted to the cleaner by squeezing the on off trigger, you can see the charging status indicator. I've got my standard Dyson V11 out so we can compare the size difference and it's not just the bin that's bigger on the outsize machine, the whole machine is considerably bigger than the standard V11. Let's put the cleaners to one side and we'll just show you the difference in the cleaner heads. So this is the standard V11 cleaner head and this is the outsize head. They are both 100 watts. So I was thinking that the larger head might be slightly more powerful, maybe 120 watts, but no, they are the same. But as you can see, if I compare them, might be better if I put that smaller one on top, you can see the difference, considerable difference in width on the two nozzles. So this will make shorter work of cleaning larger areas of carpet. But apart from that, they are very similar nozzles underneath. They both have the little slide control. So for general day-to-day -day cleaning, just leave the control in the middle. If you've got very thick pile carpets or lightweight rugs and you're finding it difficult to move the nozzle, you can reduce the suction at the head by moving the slider to the negative position. If you want to give an intense clean, a deep clean of carpets, you can turn it to the positive setting when you'll have full suction power. The new outsize head has an easy to remove brush roll. You simply pull up on this red lever here and then you can pull out the brush roll in one easy action. And according to the instruction book, you can actually rinse this under running water. 
Don't use any detergents. Make sure it's 100% dry before fitting it back onto the cleaner. Try and not get the end caps here wet. You could possibly put a tiny drop of oil in there, but it doesn't say anything about that in the instructions, but it's something you could possibly do from time to time. And don't get this part wet either, but you can wipe it with a damp cloth. Also, when the brush roll is out, you've got easier access to the motor head unit itself, and you can also check for any blockages here. Again, you can wipe this out with a slightly damp cloth or dry cloth, depending how dirty it is, but make sure it's 100% dry before returning it to the machine and using it. So the brush roll just slides back in like that. And then you can take the end cap, pop it back on the cleaner and lock it into position. In case you're interested, you can actually fit the new outsize head to a standard Dyson V11. It's exactly the same fitting. So here's my standard V11. And as you can see, it fits and works perfectly. And because it's the same wattage as the small head, it shouldn't deplete the battery any more than the small head that you get supplied with this particular model. Now, I've always found the V11 to be quite heavy in the hand but that's nothing compared to this. Now, I am charging the battery in readiness for a quick demo. So obviously this is going to feel lighter without the battery pack in, but it is considerably heavier. I'll put all the details underneath this video, all the specifications of this machine. And of course you can also check out any specifications on Dyson's website. But this whole unit is considerably larger. The Cyclone pack, everything you can see here clearly how much bigger it is and even I think well yes it will the filters will not be compatible this is the washable filter there's only one filter to clean on this machine but it consists of two parts you've got a pleated part here at the top and you've also got this cloth part so this whole thing can be washed under running water again make sure it's a hundred percent dry before replacing it into the cleaner if I take my other one out which is a bit dirtier because it is used, you can see that they are not compatible. Everything on the Dyson V11 is larger than the standard Dyson V11. So on goes the filter. Incidentally, you can't turn the machine on if the filter's not properly located. So you just push it in and give it a twist. So the main advantage of having a bigger machine is a bigger bin which means less emptying so it's same emptying system as the standard Dyson V11 and the V10s you've got this red lever here push it down the bottom opens up the dirt falls out and the shroud is cleaned using that little red rubber or silicone device there once it's empty you don't have to go near the dirt, you can close it like this, press down, make sure it's pressed down. One thing you shouldn't do, and this is warned uh, by Dyson in the instructions, if the bin's open and you're emptying it, try not to squeeze the trigger by mistake because that can allow a lot of dirt to be sucked through into the machine. So for safety's sake, you could all, always take out the battery on this model. So even if you, well, you can't actually squeeze the trigger, as you can see, with the battery out of the machine, you can't squeeze the trigger anyway. So just don't squeeze the trigger when you're emptying this cleaner. And this is the metal shroud. That should stay fairly clean, but you can again wipe that with a dry or slightly damp cloth from time to time. And if you want to clean the bin out a bit more thoroughly, that will also be removed from the machine easy enough. Press this button here, then the whole bin comes out I have on my other Dyson machines rinsed this under water. It is possible, but make sure again that it's 100% dry. Pay particular attention to any seals on the Dysons. Keep those clear of any grit or dust, because if they've got any debris in them, then it won't seal properly and you could have reduced suction or less efficiency. So this is the main motor unit. And again, at this stage, if you want to, from time to time, you can give this a wipe down to keep it clean and working efficiently. 
So apart from the wider cleaner head and the larger bin capacity, this Dyson V11 outsize performs much the same way as the standard Dyson V11. So I'd only consider this machine if you've got a very large home and can cope with the extra weight in the hand. And of course it's got the swappable batteries but Dyson have now introduced swappable batteries on their V11 machines. They quietly introduce those. So if you're buying a V11 just check that it's got the swappable batteries if you want. You can normally see on the illustrations because everyone's buying online at the moment you'll see a little red switch on the illustration so make sure if you're buying from a retailer just check that it is the machine you want because there may still be stocks of the older versions where you need a screwdriver to remove the battery so with a larger home and especially if you decide to buy another battery then this could be the only cleaner you need so I'll just pop the battery back in it's still not fully charged and the display actually warns me to charge the battery fully before first use. I'm not sure if you can quite see it there with the lights. This is a digital display, so when you pull on the trigger, you can see that the default mode is medium, and by pressing this little silver button, you can go onto boost and eco mode. And as you can see, it was giving me an approximate time of uh, battery life left. So on medium, it was giving me 18, about 18 minutes. But this battery isn't fully charged yet, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the battery out again. I do like having the swappable batteries. It's taken Dyson long enough to offer customers what they've been asking for because many cordless cleaners now have batteries you can just swap over. Some machines come with two batteries. Uh, but it makes swapping over the batteries and replacing them much easier. One thing Dyson haven't done yet, which I know is quite a common complaint amongst people who have got Dyson cordless machines, is the trigger. You still have to keep your finger on the trigger at all times when the machine is in use. So that does make it awkward, especially if you're using the hose, which to me is very necessary when you're cleaning your car interior. So for example, I can pop the crevice tool on the end of the hose. So yes, you can get into the nooks and crannies in the car or all around your home actually, but you're still having to hold the machine and squeeze the trigger. I would have liked to have seen some sort of method for keeping the trigger on all the time so you could rest the machine on the floor or just on the uh, base of your car seat in the footwell while you're using it but having to hold it all the time can get a bit tiring especially because this machine is heavier than the standard v11 which is quite a heavy cordless machine in my opinion okay well i'm going to have a little pause for now while the battery is charging and then i'll be back shortly and we'll put this dyson through its paces Okay, well the Dyson V11 outsize is now fully charged and ready for a quick first demo. One other difference between this and the regular Dyson V11 is the air watts. Now on boost, the regular V11 is claimed to have 185 air watts of suction, but this bad boy has 220 air watts of suction on boost. Bear in mind though that Dyson don't recommend you use the boost mode very often because it can shorten the life of the battery. Of course it's going to make a much shorter run time but by using boost frequently it means the battery may not last beyond the two year guarantee. Okay I'm going to uh, try the machine out first before putting any dirt down on my plush living room carpet which unfortunately my standard Dyson V11 doesn't seem to be able to cope with. The default mode for this cleaner is automatic when you have the high torque head fitted. Also I'm going to use the high torque head with the suction slider control in the middle position. I'm just going to see if it works on this plush pile carpeting without stalling. Dyson. 
As I suspected, this cleaner head does struggle on this plush pile carpeting. I know it'll be fine on the rest of the carpeting in my house, which is shorter pile, but on this pile, set at the automatic setting and with the slide control in the middle, it's very hard to push and the brush roll struggles. So I'm going to try it still in automatic, but I'm going to reduce the suction at the cleaner head using the slider. So now I've got it in the minus position. So let's see if it performs any better. Okay, well, that is an improvement. It certainly moves better, but it still struggles slightly on the medium power or automatic mode. Um, so the only other thing I can do now to make this machine work a little bit better, or at least to stop the strain on the motor inside the head, is to use it on the eco setting. But this time I'm going to put the slider in the middle and on the panel here, I'm going to select Eco and see how it performs now. So for this plush pile carpet, the best setting for me is Eco with the slider control in the middle. Before filming this video, I recorded another video featuring a mains powered cylinder machine and I put down a lot of dirt on this area of carpet where I've just gone over with a Dyson V11 outsize and it has found quite a bit of dirt, in fact a considerable amount of dirt that was left in the carpet so that is surprising especially since I had it on eco mode so let's just have a look so just in that small area of carpet that looked clean and having a, a plusher a deeper pile carpet the dirt does hide it's actually picked up pet hair and I used some red sand in my last demonstration and you can see it's found some sand that must have been hidden in the pile of the carpet. So I'm pretty impressed so far. This is certainly an improvement on the Dyson V11, my standard Dyson V11, because at least it does cope with this carpet, albeit on a lower suction setting. <laughs> Just to give this Dyson V11 outsize a thorough test, I've emptied quite a lot of muck from a large vacuum bag onto my carpet and I'm rubbing it into the pile. There's all sorts of particles here. There's rice, there's couscous, there's rolled oats, there's dog hair, bits of paper, and also green sand and little bits of glitter. If the machine copes with this on the eco setting, which I have to use it, on the Eco for this particular carpet. If it does a good job of this, then I will be seriously impressed. Okay, well, I think I've rubbed it in enough. And hopefully, because of the larger capacity of the Dyson V11 outsize, I'm not going to go over the maximum fill line, despite there being quite a lot of dirt here. Now I've only done two slow passes forward and back and it's done a pretty good job. Most of the surface dirt has been removed but I can still see quite a lot of the green sand but bear in mind I'm having to use this cleaner on its lowest suction setting of eco in order for it to actually be able to move across the carpet. I'm going to see what this is like on a shorter pile carpet as well but in the meantime I'm going to use the Dyson V11 outsize to pick up hopefully the rest of this dirt.
Now, considering there was an awful lot of dirt on this carpet, the Dyson V11 Outsize has performed very, very well, especially considering it's on eco mode. Now, I have filled the bin and I'll show you exactly how much dirt I've picked up. But to be critical, there are traces. I can see a bit of the red sand and there's a bit of green sand. Might be hard for you to see on camera, but I can see it. But of course, I've used the eco setting, which is the minimum suction. Now, I will be able to use this machine in auto. If I just pull the cleaner head back, it should perform. It's just when I push the head, that's when it struggles on this carpet. But if I just do a reverse pass, I might be able to deal with the rest of the dirt. On the automatic suction setting, the high torque head did a very good job on the reverse pass. You could see the suction with this machine because it was lifting up the pile of the carpet. So looking closer, I think that's done a very good job considering how difficult this carpet is to clean. Now for the max fill line, please. Yes, I've gone over the max fill line, but only just. Oh, no, actually almost there's the max fill line you can see the sheer amount of dirt that i've managed to pick up let's have a look at it empty it out again obviously at home you'd be doing this over your outside bin preferably but i'll try and do it in a controlled manner give it a shake now the shroud isn't spotless it's done a fairly good job of cleaning the debris from it but there's still some fine dust but I expect that's because I have cleaned up a lot of dirt in one go. So don't write in and tell me I shouldn't have done this demonstration. It's my vacuum cleaner and I'll demonstrate it how I want to. But if it can pick up this amount of dirt on eco setting from a deep pile carpet, then, you know, I'm pretty impressed. Look at it. Absolutely tons of dirt. I couldn't pick up this dirt with the standard Dyson V11 it would have gone way over the max fill line. Okay, in order to compare this carpet with a shorter pile carpet, I'll just put a little bit of dirt down on my entrance mat, and then I'll have a quick demonstration of the cleaner on a hard floor, and then that'll be the end of today's video. But I'm going to use this machine around my house for a few weeks, and then do a follow-up video so I can give you my full verdict. Now I've put some decorative sand on this short pile entrance mat and this would represent the sort of gritty particles you might bring in from the street on the bottom of your shoes. So I'm going to give it a rub in. And we'll see how well the Dyson in two passes can pick this sand up from this entrance mat. Okay, I think that's that's enough rubbed in there. Okay, this time though, I'm going to use the machine on its automatic setting. Well, again, I'm very impressed with the performance of this Dyson V11 outsize. There's not a grain of sand on this black entrance mat. 
very effective performance. In fact, it even had some agitation, which you don't often see from cordless vacuum cleaners and even had the old sound of an old fashioned upright vacuum cleaner. Very, very impressive. I wasn't expecting to like this machine, but so far it is bulky and it is heavy, but excellent performance. Okay, to finish the video, we'll just do a quick demo of floor cleaning. And then, as I said, I'll do a follow-up video in a few weeks once the honeymoon period is over and I'll give you my pros and cons. I've emptied out the sand from the previous demonstration and it's in a pile here in the middle of the rest of the mess. So I've also got some flour to represent fine particles, a bit too much flour, but anyway, it's there. I'll have to pick it up. And there's some, well, rather a lot, of rolled oats as well. So I'm going to use both heads actually. So one half I'm going to clean using the fluffy head and the other half I'm going to use the standard head which can be of course used for carpets and hard floors. With the fluffy head attached the auto mode is deactivated so I'm going to use it on the medium power setting. Well, after that demonstration, I'd say both heads did extremely well, although the fluffy head pipped the torque head to the post by being slightly better in the fact it didn't snowplow any particles. The torque head did snowplow slightly, but I was able to get that up on a second pass. It would have been nice if Dyson could introduce a wider fluffy head to match the wider torque head, and then it would be ideal for cleaning hard surfaces in larger homes. But I think after using both these nozzles, I'll continue to use the fluffy head on my hard floors. Well, that's about the end of my initial first look at the Dyson V11 outsize. And I have to say, I did like it far more than I was expecting to. It does a stellar job on carpets and hard floors, and I'm sure it'll be able to clean my whole home from top to bottom. I think this could possibly be your only vacuum cleaner. If you've got a large home, you can of course buy a separate battery to increase the cleaner's runtime. Saying that, it's the largest handheld vacuum cleaner I've ever tested, so it is quite heavy to hold in the hand. At the moment, during the times we're living in, it's not easy for us to go into stores to try the machine out. But at the time of making the video, this is only available direct from Dyson from their website. But of course, you do have a money back guarantee with Dyson. So the best thing I can suggest to you, if you're convinced this might be the cleaner for you, you can always order it from Dyson, use it in your home for a couple of weeks and return it if you're not entirely satisfied. That's the best I can do. I can recommend cleaners to you, but until you've tried them out for yourself in your own home, you'll be the best judge. So to finish, I haven't actually demonstrated the small nozzle. So this is everything I've picked up from the kitchen floor. Be hard to see on this. That is a lot of dirt. So that is an advantage, the fact that you're not having to empty this machine often. 
So for one final demonstration, to spread out all this dirt, including the sand, which has been pulverized and the rolled oats. And we'll see if we can pick anything up using the small mini motorized tool. Well, I think you'll agree that I've certainly put the Dyson V11 outsize through its paces. Now this cleaner has picked up far more dirt than it's designed to pick up in one go. But I like to do an extreme demonstration because if it picks up the extreme amount of dirt that I've shown you, then it should have no problem cleaning the average home. I'm now going to empty the machine, give it a bit of a clean up and put it on charge so it's ready to use the next day. And I'm going to use it as a normal vacuum cleaner all around my house for a couple of weeks. I'm going to clean everywhere, stairs, upholstery, curtains, carpets and floors. Everywhere in my house is going to be cleaned with this Dyson V11. And then I'll do a follow up video to give you the final verdict. In the meantime, if you have any comments or questions about this vacuum cleaner, please comment below. Don't forget to subscribe, click the bell icon and you'll be notified every time I upload a new floor care video. So until the next time, for me and the Dyson V11 outsize, it's goodbye and thanks for watching.